We are constantly in defense of our right to self-determination and sovereignty. Our duty is to protect that sovereignty anytime it's challenged and attacked. And if you feed the people, if you meet the people's housing, their food, their clothing, their economic necessities in a society that meets their necessities, there would be no need for prisons. Mr. Montgomery, savages like you belong in a cage. to 38 years ago today, September the 13th, I was in a prison known as Attica State Prison in New York. I was 19 years old. I was given a sentence before I went to prison of eight years as a homeless, indigenous person in Buffalo, New York, sleeping in 30 below weather in hallways, no food, hungry, starving, persecuted by racists. One night out of desperation, I attempted a, a robbery by putting my finger in my coat pocket and trying to hold up a store so I could eat. In the process, she yelled out for her brothers. They were actually found out later there was a couple of mafioso types. They come running after me, I fell down, they snatched me, all I had was a submarine sandwich. I went to court, was told I was gonna get probation, then found out, found out that they reneged on that. When I got into court, the judge, a staunch racist, looked at me and said, Mr. Moncori, savages like you belong in a cage. And I looked up, I was a young, you know, I said, oh, no, fairly you know, young guy, I never attempted any form of criminal activity. And when I looked up and then he said to me, he said, you were guilty, they issued an eight year sentence for an attempted robbery of a submarine sandwich. Oh. That became my soldier in the prison. Well, you know, George Jackson, he went to jail for a $71 robbery. And we'll talk about him in a minute. On September 13th, when I went to Attica, I eventually ended up in Attica. I was in 16 different prisons in New York State. At the age of 19, I ended up in Attica State Prison, 16 days before the infamous rebellion. One of the first people that I met when I was there was a man by the name of Sam Melville. You've heard of him? Have you heard of him? Sam Melville was known as the Mad Bomber. One of the weather underground peoples that was indicted and convicted in New York for blowing up corporations and military installations and in solidarity with the Black Panther Party in a time of very heightening and very strong militancy in, in the United States against man the status quo. He was also involved in taking a strong position against the anti-war movement, which of course we all know years down the road was a false flag operation with Alpha Thompson, Alpha Tonkin, and it was designed, 58,000 soldiers got killed, and McNamara himself basically admitted that it was a false flag operation. There was no basis plan for a ship being blown up in, in that hurry. And yet, they were over there for oil, gas, and all of it's always been the resource wars. It's always been wars for resources. So now, <clears throat> there was a whole climate, there was a, 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 a strengthening of what was known as the prison rights movement. Many uh, black militants were coming in, brothers and sisters, men from the, uh, the Black Liberation Army, the Black Panthers, the, Panther, the uh, Puerto Rican Young Lords, the anti-war movement peoples were coming through. There was a heightening of the social consciousness and there was resistance to the status quo in America. 
And so there was millions of people mobilizing and beginning men to challenge men to status quo. Many of us began to see ourselves as political prisoners, the victims of a vicious economic system, just trying to survive. And many of you homeless folks know what I'm talking about. So here we are in the joint, and I was there 16 days beforehand. Sam Melville, man, was a prison organizer. He clandestinely, man, put out newsletters on pieces of paper, and we had the, the network going around, man, politicizing prisoners. I was one that he was trying to politicize. He was trying to teach me because when I went in, I was pretty much just an a conscious reactionary, in a sense. But I was young. I didn't know any better. But my learning came in the penitentiary. So the long and short is that uh, I also met a person that you know well by the name of Martin Sostre. Have you heard of him? Martin Sostre was a black man who was an anarchist in New York State. He was a very, very recognized political prisoner worldwide. One thing, Martin Sostre and I were locked up in solitary confinement together. And the one thing I learned from Martin Sostre, here's a man I saw that every time they took him out for a visit, Martin Sostre, man, refused to allow them to degrade his integrity as a human being to pull his pants down and force him to bend over and do a rectal search. And I watched, we locked right next to each other, and I watched every time he come back, he, they said, are you going to pull your pants down, nigga? And he said, no, no, I won't. And uh, next thing I know, they said, well, there's guards, the goon squad. They beat him senselessly, knocked him to the ground, and ripped it off. And in one case, they started to stick a nightstick, which they, they called nigger sticks, up his ass. Uh, I looked at this and I was like, on the one hand, terrified of what they were doing to him, but on the other hand, I said, this man has got integrity. And I adopted his position, and I began to do the same thing he did, and started getting attacked for not allowing them to do rectal searches on me and dehumanize me, make me bend over. I said, eventually, eventually I would tell them in my fights, continual fights with them, if you want to look up my ass, you get on the ground that's the only way to look up my ass. So, that began my struggling thing. But anyways, we talked about years and years of repression about the Ku Klux Klan and John Burchers that ran the penal system, beating and killing with impunity and put throwing people in unmarked graves. We talked about the IRX program that they had in Dannemora State Prison, a place called Clinton on the Montreal border, upstate New York, with Nazi-type positions, creating for anybody that took on a militant posture, a revolutionary posture. They were assigned back to be thrown into the solitary confinement, beaten, and then after they were beaten, they waited for their operation and, they could, and the physicians committed frontal lobe or lobotomies on militant, powerful militant brothers, and at, at the end of it, at the end of it, those militant warriors you saw one day after the operation, you saw this. <laughs> 